hello to all the participants in the Global AI Hackathon Build with AI Emergence that's going on right now. Um, this is going to be a special message from myself. My name is Danny Ma. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Sydney Data Science. And um, yeah, I'm very passionate about using data and I really think hackathons are a great idea and I hope you guys are having a lot of fun right now. Um, today we're going to be joined by Mr. Ben Taylor um, and he's going to run through a few different tips with his vast array of experience in this area. Um, so hopefully you can tune in to this and I will try and add my thoughts and reactions as we go through it as well. But yeah, please enjoy some of Mr. Ben Taylor's um, amazing experience. Ben Taylor here. I'm the chief AI evangelist for Data Robot, co-founder of Zeph. I was the chief data scientist for Sequoia Vact, Higher View. Worked at a hedge fund as a quant. Worked at Intel for five years. Very, very obsessed and involved in the AI community. So I've done three data science competitions where I've hosted them. I've also been a participant. So the first data science competition where I was a participant, it was two. I won one of the competitions and, and it was funny because they announced the awards. There were two competitions. I competed in both. I won the first one. And when they announced the second one, I, I was expecting to sweep where I wanted to win both. And it's just funny. It's like, give me a break. Um, I should have been happy when he won, but I remember being disappointed because I wanted the whole local data science community to know that I had won both competitions. And the second competition, I lost to an R Shiny app. And I, I complain online about R. R and Python are both great tools, but if you see me complaining online about R, it's because I lost a data competition to this R Shiny app. So it's still, still bugged about. And this, that was a long time ago, six, seven years ago. So. Hosting data competitions, uh, I, I did one on predicting, we built a data set on whether or not a Taylor Swift song was successful, so listening to a very short audio clip, you had to build a machine learning model to predict that. We did one where you had to predict if an image was a crater or a volcano from Mars, where we provided that data set, and we did one where you had to predict yield using a synthetic semiconductor data set. And for these data competitions, I had built out a scoring server. I, for one of them, we raised a fair amount of money, uh, a fair bit of money, I think $15,000 that we gave away with big checks. We had dinner. Wait, did he say $15,000? Wow! That's crazy. Uh, celebrated these individuals so I so I understand the value so I've been on the job searching side where I've been applicant I've been on the job hiring side and, and hackathons are great things to really allow you to flex allow you to push hard on a, on a new project work with a team be creative and kind of extend yourself and and they, they can get a lot of attention from potential employers whether or not you win. Just being a participant is a good thing. So now I want to talk about some tricks and advice to help people that are jumping into this. So when we talk about going from data to value, it's really important to, every night to take the opposite approach. You have to kind of have to understand the end product. So but if it's a, a if it's a prediction competition that's let's pretty straightforward, you're going to be scored on your ability to predict on an unseen data set. If it's more of a storytelling or some strategic insight, you really need to understand the edge case. I think sometimes we we get trapped in this activity cycle where we're just trying to go 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 and work on things and that can be kind of a toxic strategy because you can invest too much time on these different non-value add tangents so it's really important to work backwards and kind of come up with a strategy and i think think for these types of projects be strategic kind of come up with an outline with what your approach is going to be what your milestones are going to be and what does a compelling submission look like and then the uh, the, the second thing I'm going to talk about is going to be... So before Ben jumps into his second tip, definitely um, working backwards from the final solution, regardless of whether it's the prediction task or the NLP task, 
or the data visualization task is very, very important. Um, try to make sure that your, your whole uh, strategy and what you're trying to bring about as a compelling story is very uh, tangible and also quite explainable as well. Just try and keep it simple, but try and show off some of those skills as well. Um, but yeah, hope you guys can enjoy Ben's second tip. The power of the power of Google, which sounds really, really silly, but what we see with people that are junior in the industry, they haven't had as much experience searching through Stack Overflow, Google, Finding Solutions, GitHub. And so the argument I'll make is there's a lot of solutions that you need that are just a Google search away. And it's really important that we figure out how to make that connection, how to look for that effectively. So maybe some quick tips that I'll have. I, I really like looking. So, so first figure out a language or a stack that is widely accepted. It hasn't expired. So something like Theano, which I used to like, it's since kind of expired or cafe or something like that. Like don't, don't never ever work on a platform that is not currently accepted because you're going to struggle to find solutions. Um, try to work on something that has good reviews for being hackable and approachable. I know TensorFlow and MXNet have had negative reviews for getting under the hood and doing things, but something like PyTorch and Keras, which is a wrapper on top of TensorFlow, have had good feedback. So, um, so really understand that based on what you're going after, and and try, you know, try to really hammer away and get good at searching through Stack Overflow, searching through GitHub. If I'm looking for a code submission, I might even include certain code elements where I know they're there, like an import statement, or if I know it's on GitHub or Bitbucket, I'll try to isolate the search there. Um, yeah, so we've talked about two things. We've talked about work backwards, visualize the final submission, work backwards from that, um, really gear up to being better at searching. Uh, for mentors and other people in the community that can help, they're, they're good at searching. They've been searching for quite a while. I'm an expert Googler, but that's because I've been Googling for a long time. Uh I'm also an expert Googler. It's probably the main thing that I do these days. Um, one thing to add on to uh, Ben's advice for number two is also he's talking a lot about some of the deep learning packages and some of the different frameworks that we use for deep learning. Um, don't be afraid if your solution that you're using for your um, hackathon um, your prototype is not deep learning. Don't feel that you need to jump straight into the deep learning. You can still achieve a lot with relatively simple models, but maybe for the NLP, it might be worth considering some of Ben's advice as well. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and then the third thing, I'll, um, third thing I'll bring up will be there's depending on the data sets that you're dealing with, there. If a result is too good to be true, it is too good to be true. So you potentially you can deal with issues like um, target leakage, you can deal with issues like skewing, where you have um, skewed distributions in your training sets that are throwing you off. You, you can struggle with outliers, you can struggle with um, missing features where you have to impute stuff. And so I think there's kind of this tick list of standard data science gotchas that you don't want to fall prey to. So feature or target leakage, extreme skew in a target is very problematic, whether it's a continuous variable or categorical. Um, missing variables can be problematic. Um, one of the other things to talk about is all the data that matters. Do you have all the data that matters? Are there additional features you could go and scrape? And and, and I guess the, the last thing I'll end with, don't don't be scared of scraping data. If you have external data that can add value to your problem, that can be that can be a huge win because it shows ambition, it shows motivation. But if you're bringing external data to the party, uh, that is, that can offer a huge lift on a problem where other people were unwilling or they, they lack the creativity to go do that. So hopefully those are some quick tips. Um, when it comes to a hackathon, all of the hackathons I've done have just been pure prediction based, so scoring people has been straightforward. So yeah, good luck, the, the, pro the journey and the effort are definitely worth it.
when it comes to career and employment perspective. And thank you so, so much for listening to Ben and myself go through a few tips for you guys. Um, I think for for anyone who is working on the data visualization, uh, Kate will be coming out with some videos soon on how you can uh, apply some best practices to your data visualizations. Um, I think, yeah, final words for me would just be, um, please keep in mind some of this advice that Ben and myself have given you, mostly Ben. I, I've just been kind of just agreeing with everything. I don't think I have much to add from his advice. Um, yeah, if anything, start thinking about your pitches and the presentation uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, definitely, uh, we'll, be, we'll be keeping an eye out for some of the presentations which have uh, a much larger, like an impactful statement as well. So try and uh, grab our attentions, um, let us know what your, your solution is about. And yeah, just have a lot of fun. Enjoy yourselves. And, um, make sure you're getting enough rest and you're eating enough, but all the best for the rest of the hackathon and hope you guys um, are very successful during the judging panel. Thanks again. <laughs>